Once we get ready to place our first order with Organizers Direct, what we're going to do is we're going to go to our parts list page. And for all new dealers, I always suggest that they go through and use the order via inventory tool. So once we have the design set up, if we have multiple rooms, we can come down and click on additional rooms, make sure that each of the rooms that you want to select are checked. This particular closet or job just has one closet in it, so it's going to be relatively simple. Make sure that that is checked. Um, once I have all the rooms the way I want them, or that I'm going to add to this order, I am going to go to my order via inventory tool. When I click on that, it's going to bring up another dialog box. And from here, we can do several things. There is the order. So we have Julia's closet. Um, we can leave the order named as that, or we can change the name of this. Whatever we change here is what the order uh, will look like in Excel. It'll give us the name for the order for Excel. The first thing I want you to notice is in the inventory tool, we have three different tabs. We have a current order tab, a pending order tab, and the inventory tab. The current order is just that. It's the order we're getting ready to place today. The pending order, a pending order is an order that's we've placed and is maybe in process at the factory or it's in transit to us or we've received it but have yet to install it. So pending orders are orders that have been placed but not yet installed. And inventory is any inventory that's left over after the job has been installed. Uh, so currently you can see as a new dealer, we're not going to have anything in either of those fields. So as I come back to the current order tab, I want to notice several things in here. Um, you're going to see the pending and inventory, which relate back to the other tabs that we just showed you. If we had anything in inventory or anything in pending, that uh, those items would show up in this place. And as we look down through here, you can see that live storage is going to look at what's in the design. It's also based on what is in inventory and pending, it's going to calculate how many we need to complete the job. And then it's going to look at case quantity and come up with how many we have to order in order to get to even case quantity. So as your first order, really at this point, you're probably ready to just go ahead and you can export this directly to the order form. But there's just some other features and benefits of this that I want to go through before placing the order. Um, one thing to note with this is we can add SKUs to the job. So that's just adding items. So as your first order, something you may want to do is order the camming tool or the gizmo. So I can just here type gizmo. I can have the cam drilling jig show up. I can put a quantity of one in there and then add that to my order. So now if I go to the bottom of the order, you'll see that the cam jig showed up into there. I can do this with any part that we sell. If I want to order a door sample, I can add a door sample to here. I can, maybe I have some shelves I need to send to a, uh, a prior customer. They want a couple of additional adjustable shelves. Well, I can go in here and um, add, if I want um, 18 adjustable, uh, say it's, candlelight. Uh, there's my 18 three-quarter candlelight shelves adjustable. I can add two of these to the order because maybe that's all the customer wants. And you'll notice anytime we add items to the order, we have this gold colored box down here with zero in quantity. It's Live storage is telling us we need to do something else. And at this point, what we'd want to do is hit auto calculate order. And that will go in and calculate what we need to order. So in this instance, we're going to add one gizmo, but we're going to add three candlelight shelves. 
because we only need two, so then that means we're going to have one in inventory uh, once we're through giving the customer these, or selling the customer these additional two shelves. We can even go in and take a look at the order and say, you know, this particular job, maybe we don't want to order all the toe kicks and we're going to be willing to cut down a toe kick and recam it so I don't have as much excess inventory. I know that, you know, I can cut 30 inch toe kicks from a 36 inch toe kick. So I might want to go in and change the quantity on the toe kicks here to four and then go in here and say I want zero. I'm not going to delete the item just to show you how this is going to work. Then I go back to auto calculate order and now it's showing four 36 inch toe kicks, no 30 inch. And then I can actually come in on this one if I didn't want to have that show up in the order form, I can highlight that item and then just delete the SKU to get rid of it. So now what I'm doing is I'll only have two additional toe kicks left over instead of having uh, one, or I would have had three 30 inch toe kicks and five 36 inch toe kicks. Now I'll only have two 36 inch toe kicks. And so as you're getting started, that just might be a good use of your money. Um, we can also do the same thing with shelves if we decide that you might see in a job where you have four 36 inch shelves designed in the job and two 42s, I may go in and say instead of ordering nine shelves to cover those two areas, I might go in and change the quantity of the 36 inch shelves to three and the quantity of the 42 inch shelves is three and then just realize I'm going to take that last 36 inch shelf and cut it out of that excess 42 inch piece so that once again will help reduce the amount of excess inventory we have. Um, so once we're, we've made all the manipulations to the order, uh, we can go ahead and we can get ready to export this to the order form. Because prior to this we should have uh, customized our order form, when I click on Customize Order Form, you'll now see that this closet comes up as Julia's Closet. We don't really need that one extension on there, so I'm going to delete that out of there. And now I'm going to uh, save that file in that location. Now you're going to see we have the enable contents opening up. So as I click on my enable contents, that will go through and fill out um, all the quantities that are required on the job. And it's hard to see this. It's a little bit smaller. Um, and, and then it's going to come in on this particular job. And when we go to the bottom, we can see the job has $1,880. There's $250 freight charge onto there for a total of 2,130 jobs. My recommendation is to do, if you're going to use the inventory tool, is to order um, one job at a time. So in any given week, you might be ordering two or three jobs. If you're the total of the three orders is more than 3,000 US or 3,300 Canadian. Um, you will have, you'll get free freight. It might show up with freight on each job, but the customer service department should pick that up uh, at the time of placing those orders and you wouldn't be charged any additional freight. Just make sure that you're looking at the acknowledgments when they come in and that if there's a mistake on those freight charges that you get that corrected before the time of invoicing. So at this point, really we have this order, we can save it and there's instructions here that you email this to orders at orgdirect.com. So just go to your uh, email system. For me, I use Outlook, so I would go into Outlook 
it's not gonna let me open it up, but um, could go into Outlook and then just attach this Julia's Closet file to an email and email it to orders at orndirect.com. That's it's as simple as the ordering can be. So you'll notice now when we come back to live storage that the inventory tool is still open, but it has moved Julia's closet from a current order into a pending order. Now you'll see that in the design, we have four in the design, six ordered, there's a surplus of two. Uh, so this is gonna be any excess inventory that's left over. And so what live storage will do in the future is it'll know this stuff is out there as available inventory and will not order it on the next order. Um, the other thing that you can do at this point is you could print the pending order. And what that's going to do is basically convert this to a PDF. And you can use this with your installers. They can look at this on order. And if something were in the design, and then the order quantity was less than what's in design, that means it's gonna come off of the shelf or out of the truck. You might wanna just highlight that particular row and let the, your installers know that this is something you, you probably need to pull off the shelf. Uh, in this particular instance, obviously since this is our first order, there's nothing like that that's gonna show up, but this is a good exercise for you to go through. We can go ahead and print this from here. I'm just going to close it out because we, I don't really need that for our demonstration. Uh, so now we're going to assume, well, before I make that assumption, I'm going to back up a second here. I'm going to go ahead and close out of this inventory tool. And I just want to show you how this is going to work in the future. If we had to order the same closet again or the next time we order a closet, we go back to the inventory tool again, and now you'll see that in this design, you know, we're back to, you know, the same thing before where we're, um, we're not ordering any of the 36 inchers because we have excess inventory, but we will be ordering the 30s. But anywhere that we have pending, you know, here's 18 inch toe kicks, there's five left over, one in the design, uh, you know, I can go in and it's not ordering any because we had five left over from the previous job. And the same thing comes in in hardware. So when we go through and look at all these items, if I export this to the order form again, assuming everything is right, uh, now we'll notice that the order form, once it's filled out, is significantly less. Now this order with the last one we looked at was over $1,800. This time when we go to order this job, it's now only $1,300. So the order form was able to save us $500 cash on this job. So we're recouping some of that excess money from the, from the previous order. So that's really the beauty of the inventory tool is it will help you manage your cash flow much better than if you're trying to do this all manually and save this one. Um, now, if we look at our pending orders, I have Julia's closet twice. Uh, probably should have differentiated the names between these two. So here was the first one. So say we went in and in, we've installed that. The next step that we do is once it's installed is we receive and merge it to inventory. And what that's now done is taken all those excess items and left them into inventory. And now you're going to see kind of a, a unique thing going on here is that once you get into the pending and you're in the multiple jobs, pending can either be a positive or a negative number. If I have inventory left over from previous jobs and in stock, but I've got more of them sold on subsequent jobs, it could show up as a negative number, like we're seeing here, uh, using up one of each of these two items. Uh, or you can go in and see the inventory being positive, which means 
you know, we have these in inventory, but off the next jobs, just because of the way the case count works, we're going to get one more out of each of those. So you'll see both po uh, positive and negative numbers in pending. They should never be, that, po that pending should never be greater than plus or minus the case quantity. It should never really, if its case quantity is six, it should never be lower than minus five or greater than five. It should somewhere be, be somewhere within that range. Uh, so that's pretty much how the inventory program works. The one thing I want to show you on this page is if your installer were happen to damage a shelf during installation, they could come in in this situation and say, you know, from here off of that, maybe we damaged one of these um, 30 inch fixed shelves. I can just take this, set the quantity to zero. Do I want to delete this item? No, because I've got something pending in it. And then, um, and we now know that our inventory is good. So the uh, inventory tool is no better than the effort that you put into it. You've got to make sure that any changes that come off plan that aren't, that aren't according to plan that they get accounted for in the inventory tool. Otherwise, you're going to have, you know, the inventory. If, if the inventory isn't right, you're going to get garbage out of it. So it's garbage in, garbage out. Um, the one thing you want to be careful of if you're adjusting the inventory that if, you know, say you have a situation like here, maybe they deleted both of these shelves. Uh, broke both of them, and so those are at zero. Now we've created a scenario where we have minus one pending, but we don't have any to fulfill that. So that's something that we're going to need to get in contact with customer service or your regional sales manager to go through and help them get this set up correctly for you. Because um, you'll want to go in and get those shelves brought in on your next order, otherwise you're going to end up being short. So like anything else, you have to put some effort into this, but I think this is a great way to go in and keep your cash down lower. Um, the last thing I want to demonstrate to you is if you're going through, and maybe you made a mistake on your second Julia's closet, before you can go in and order it again, the next thing we want to do is if there was a mistake on this order is we want to go through and delete the pending order first. And if you do that, there's no making up on it. You're, you've just gotten rid of it. But before you do anything else, delete it, close the inventory tool, and then open it back up again. And that will ensure that you are getting the correct amount. If you make a mistake on the inventory tool, live storage isn't going to know that you made a mistake. It's just assuming and you you don't delete the order, the live tor storage will just assume that you're ordering the same thing twice and now you're really going to get messed up on your inventory and that's just not real fun to go in and, and to correct. So just please make sure that if you're having to redo an order that you hit the del delete order before you place the new order. I think that's about everything that I can think of that you need to know about the inventory tool. Once again, if you have any questions about this, you can call your regional sales manager and they'll help you walk through this.